Hey everybody, so I get asked pretty frequently what my VR setup is and how I record for YouTube and Twitch, and like how I get the chat in my hand and stuff. Um, so I thought I would just make a video going over my setup and some of the software that I'm using to uh, achieve these things with. I made a video like this a little over a year ago, but my setup has changed and I also had a super terrible mic back then. Um, so hopefully this will be a little bit more helpful for you guys. Now keep in mind, some of the things that I'm using here are not publicly available anymore. You might be able to find them on like eBay and stuff. Um, like the headset I'm using is pretty old. Uh, but, you know, maybe it'll be helpful for you from an information standpoint. So anyways, here I go. Alright, and we're starting off with the headset. This is an original HTC Vive all the way back from 2016. Um, it's fully upgraded at this point. I have the deluxe audio strap, the wireless adapter um, and I also have a mini USB fan on top of that because the adapter tends to overheat and if you don't have that on there um, you're gonna have issues and uh, the adapter comes with a little dongle thing uh, that hooks up to your computer um, through a PCIe slot and it comes with this uh, auxiliary cord thing that you just plug into the back and um, it gives you a very good connection uh, after you install the fan and that I've had zero issues with latency or compression it's the best wireless um, experience in VR I think you can get currently which is part of the reason I haven't decided to upgrade to like an index or um, any of the newer headsets because I like my wireless all right and I'm also using the uh, VR cover replacement pads both for the deluxe audio strap and my Vive this company is great they make replacement pads for like every single VR headset known to man because companies decide to include a really bad foam pad with their headsets for some reason, uh, but VR Cover fixed that, so I would recommend them for sure. Alright, moving on to controllers. I'm using Valve Index controllers, which I bought separately. These don't come included with a Vive, and they are, in my opinion, the best VR controllers that you can get. Uh, I, I love them a lot. They simulate finger tracking, picking up stuff. They're just amazing to use. The, uh, the ergonomics on these things are amazing. And that stand there is a 3D printed stand, um, which I'm using with magnetic charger, so I can just like plop it down into that um, to store the controllers when I'm done using VR. Okay, for audio, I'm using a mod mic wireless. This thing is great. Uh, it's very easy to set up. You just plug a dongle into your PC, click the button, it'll connect straight away. It's fully wireless. It's better than Bluetooth audio, um, and it will improve your VR audio by a lot because the Vive default mic is completely terrible. Um, so this makes your life a lot better. All right, for the base stations, I am on original 1.0 base stations. Uh, these things are great. They've never failed me. I have them on tripods because I didn't want to drill into my walls, um, but they cover what I need them to cover and the tracking is flawless with these things. All right, and these are the Vive trackers, which are used for full body tracking and things like Blade and Sorcery or VR chat if you want to go dancing. Um, and I do label mine right and left because that is important for some of the games. You need them to be in your correct position of your body. Um, I put them on my ankles as well. Some people put them on the bottom of their feet. I personally have never found that comfortable, uh, but it can get you know, like more accurate tracking that way by like tilting your foot in different directions. Um, and then I put the hip one at the, you know, front of my stomach. You've probably seen that if you've seen my other videos. Um, but yeah, you also need uh, three USB slots and they cannot be right next to each other on your PC. They have to be like one or two USB slots away from each other, or you might get like issues with the tracking frequency. So. Just make sure you separate the USBs out if you plan to get full body track. Now to attach them to my body, um, there's a couple of options out there. There's track straps, which are the most well-known. Track strap even makes like battery ones to increase the battery life of these because on default, these will last, I wanna say like uh, three to four hours, which I've never had an issue with because I don't play VR longer than that amount of time, but some people may wanna play longer. Um, I'm using a different company for the feet trackers because I have used track straps in the past, not the battery ones, but they I found that they like got worn out over time. Uh, and these 
don't, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. Alright, moving on to the fun stuff. Uh, haptic vests and the uh, battery that I'm using for my wireless headset. So I'm using a Subpack M2X, which is kind of an older haptic vest at this point. There's newer ones like the B Haptics, but it was cheap and it works for my purposes. It works off of audio, um, so like in games you can kind of feel the uh, bullets when you're getting shot and stuff. And I have a uh, USB cord going to a 20,000 watt anchor battery, uh, which gives me like six hours of battery life in games. All right, and this is the other rig that I use when I play VR. Um, this is just the battery with the holder that you get when you get the wireless adapter attached to a back brace, which I got off Amazon. Um, and I use this if I wanna dance or if I just need like a lighter setup because the sub pack is a little bit heavy. So with this, it's just kind of like a harness and I can wear it to move around it's a little bit easier. All right, as for storage, I'm using this awesome mannequin head, which I got off Amazon. I don't really remember what it was called, but I'll try to find the link and put it in the description. Um, and I just plop my headset on that when I'm done using it. And I have googly eyes because googly eyes are awesome. Alright, and here's my Quest 2, which I got pretty recently. Um, I'm going to make a more in-depth video on this, comparing the differences to the Vive Wireless because there are some pros and cons to this headset, um, but I did want to go over some of the accessories that I've gotten for this uh, quickly and that you might want to look into getting yourself if you have a Quest 2. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing I have is the Elite Strap. You've probably heard from every reviewer on this headset that the default strap on this is completely terrible. You don't want to use it. Uh, you, you want the replacement Elite Strap or something because the default strap is very bad. I'm also using the VR Cover Cloth Thing that goes over the default foam. I was not able to get my hands on the replacement uh, foam because they're sold out from from everywhere. Uh, and then finally, I'm using uh, the Oculus Quest 2 um, straps, which there's a lot of companies making these. I don't remember the name of the one I went with, but they work pretty well. And uh, the reason I got these is as soon as I used the touch controllers, I wanted to like throw the controller and have it stay in my hand. So these definitely help to simulate the great experience with the index controllers. All right, and for storage, I am using a case that I found on Amazon. Uh, and if it's the Elite Strap, the controllers, even like the glass separator um, and some other accessories that you may want, like batteries or an extra battery for your headset. And it is a lot better than the official carrying case, in my opinion. Um, and I'll try to find a link for this and put it in the description. Um, and it was also cheaper than the official one as well. Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh, Gingas, that's such an awesome setup, but how are you recording and streaming all your VR gameplay stuff? Well, don't fear, because Gingas is here to teach you how to do it. Um, so the first thing you're gonna want is a uh, software to you know, record and stream and the best one is OBS. Um, now, there's there's two versions of OBS. There's OBS Studio and uh, Streamlabs. I would recommend you use OBS Studio. The reason is that VR takes up a lot of system resources and OBS Studio is less intense on your PC uh, when you're recording and streaming. And Streamlabs is also uh, clunky, in my opinion. and it's just kind of annoying to use. OBS Studio is, once you get used to it, it, it is a lot, it's a lot easier. So just, just use this. Um, if you wanna be, you know, super pro like me, just kidding, I'm not pro at all. <laughs> Anyways, uh, cool. So to set up OBS uh, for streaming or recording or whatever, um, I will teach you how to do this. So for video, um, I have this on 1080p. Uh, depending on your GP, you may want to lower this to 720p um, for VR. There, you're not going to notice a huge difference, or your audience isn't going to notice a huge difference, and you're going to get a smoother output um, because VR needs a very smooth output for it to look good. Uh, for this, um, you want to keep this on NVENC unless you're doing something like Fallout and Skyrim or something that is using up a lot of your GPU. You can change that to your a CPU encoder. 
And then uh, don't keep this at 10,000 kilobytes, put that at 6,000. Um, keyframes too, quality high, and uh, everything else is fine. Um, and then again, I would I would stream this at 720p unless you have like a 3000 series card. Um, then you can put it higher or, you know, do what you want. Um, I would just recommend 720p for VR stuff and make it completely smooth. At least for like streaming on Twitch or something. Uh, if you're recording a video, you can probably keep it higher. Okay, so to record uh, VR gameplay, you're gonna need something called OBS uh, Capture Plugin, which will give a direct output to what you see in the headset for your audience. Um, that's what you're gonna want. And what you wanna do is come over to this download thing, uh, download the latest version in assets, click on that, and open this. And then you're gonna wanna find where you had OBS Studio installed, um, which it's pretty easy to install this to begin with. You just download the installer, it'll run through everything pretty much automatically. Um, and you come over to where you have OBS Studio installed, which for me, it's in my program files folder, but it may be program files 86 for you. I don't know. Um, but it's right here. Uh, so you just open this up. I've had to open uh, that up and, oh my God, keep opening it. Weird stuff. Um, all right, and then you just drag and drop uh, this into there. And then you'll have OpenVR Capture plugin. And then you can come back and open up OBS again. You make a new source and you should see something on there called uh, open VR capture and you just click on that you type okay um, and then put this to your headset so if you're on like a valve index do the valve index or five or whatever um, then click okay and then you're gonna turn on your headset and you'll have a direct um, uh, the source to <laughs> The, uh, you know, what you're seeing in your headset. So that's how you get a good output there. Sweet. Uh, and then you also may see me using a cam sometimes when I'm streaming VR. Uh, and what I'm using for that is I use my phone and I'm using an app called IV Cam and it streams the cam over Wi Fi. And uh, then I just make a new source as a video capture device and I make it small and put it in the corner um, and I you know that, that's easy because that way I can get like a really wide shot of my play space um, so people can see what I'm doing when I'm uh, looking silly playing VR games so that's that all right the other thing I wanted to go over is uh, audio software that I'm using and I am mostly using something called voice mod um, now you may have heard of this. Some people use it to get funny voices. Like you can, um, I don't know, I could be a robot. Hello there, hello. But that's not why I use this. Um, I use this as a noise gate for my mic. It works on the mod mic or any mic that you may want to use. Uh, it's going to get rid of the white noise. And I will give an example of that. So let me turn it off. Uh, and you can instantly hear that there's a bunch of background noise. Now if I turn it on again, the sound is a lot cleaner. So I would recommend this. Um, I ended up buying this because I liked it so much and I wanted to um, uh, support the person that made this. But I I don't think you need to buy it to be able to like edit it to just get um, a cleaner sound out of the mic. All right, so you have your uh, VR, live streaming or recording setup um, in OBS, but you need a way to see your chat if you're live streaming, what are you gonna do? Well, uh, have I got the solution for you? <laughs> um, you're gonna want a overlay app. So my personal recommendation is something called Desktop Portal. It's on Steam. This runs off of Steam VR, so keep that in mind if you're using like Oculus or another headset. 
you're gonna want SteamVR running to get this working or use OpenVR Composite, which I'm not gonna go into that because I primarily use SteamVR headsets. Um, so this thing is great. It lets you like overlay your chat or other windows in VR. You can just like put it on your hands or wherever you want it. Um, I believe this is $10. I know the developer. This is a great app. I've used it since it launched. Um, and it's my favorite overlay app out of anything else I've tried. Now there's also something called a uh, OVR Toolkit. Toolkit. Oh. I think this is more expensive. Um, and Desktop Portal is better in my opinion. This thing was okay, but it's a little bit clunky looking. Um, it, it, it works decently, like it's a powerful tool. Um, works the same way, you can like overlay apps and stuff, but it's a little bit more, more annoying to use this versus desktop portal. Uh, so like I said, I would personally recommend um, this for the best experience. All right, so I'm giving away my biggest secret, which is how I stream VR games to Reddit. Um, not a lot of people know how to do this, so, so don't do it. Just kidding, you should. It's awesome. Um, so I'm using something called RPAN Studio, which I don't even remember how I ran across this, uh, but it's a OBS thing uh, specifically for Reddit streaming. So you just download it, it works the same way as OBS. And um, you open it up and it'll have like the correct dimensions to stream on Reddit. I can make this bigger and you can put whatever you want. Um, I have my cam right there. And then I also, it works the same way. So if you want to stream VR, you can just drag the OpenVR Capture plugin in uh, that folder where our pin studio is located. Um, you just drag it in there and then you should be able to make the sources. Just like, uh, just like regular OBS. You can even like drag these things out, which is how I get the chat on VR Reddit. That's like the Reddit chat feature thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I'm doing uh, Reddit streaming. All right, that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on my setup and how to get started with, with pro VR content creation. <laughs> so yeah, um, have a great rest of your day and hopefully uh, you guys start making some cool stuff because there can never be enough VR content out there. I think it's an exciting uh, medium, so bye.